If you want to solve hard Sudoku quicker, then you need to know more techniques to find advanced strategies. I will show you how to find the remarkable strategy you need to solve the green cell and the rest of this Sudoku. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. Look at where your eyes are drawn. Look across row one. There's a lot of digits filled in. So you have a one right here, and it can't be in these three cells. You can solve the cell immediately for a one. And you may notice you have two fours here in columns one and two. There is no four in row one, so that has to be a four. And this is going to be a six, seven naked pair. Then come over here into column nine. We have a one, five, six, seven, eight. We need a two, three, four, nine. Since the two and the three are in this block, they can't be in these two cells. So they've got to be in these two cells. I have a three right there. So that's a two, and that's going to be your three, meaning we have a three in the corner. Yay! And you'll put a four, nine right here as a naked pair to finish that column, and a five, eight right here. Greetings, friend. This puzzle is rated 744. Hard because it requires at least one advanced strategy to solve it logically. Akash Dulani is one of the top setters in the world, and he posts this on Logic Masters India. Thank you, Akash, for this puzzle. And if you want to solve the green cell, you have to find the remarkable advanced strategy. To get there, look at row nine. You have an eight right here. If you in those cells, only place for the eight in the row is right there which leaves just a one and a nine naked pair in row nine. And now we can solve for five here in column one, because you have this five right there. Only two places it could be in block one is right here. So what I just did is called Snyder Notation. Anytime a three by three block, two possibilities for a candidate, mark it in case we solve one cell, we can solve the other right away. In this case, since the fives are both in column two, inside block two, they cannot be anywhere else outside the block. None of these cells can be a five anymore because if you put a five there, no place but a five in block one. And since you have a five right here, this is the only place you can put a five in column one. And so now we have a one, two, three, four, five, and an eight, we need a six, seven, and a nine. We already have a seven right there. Since the nine is not there, this is gonna be Snyder nines, restricting the nines of these two cells in block seven. Okay, let's see if we can solve some of these sevens. I got two sevens here. I got seven right there. We're going to be able to solve this first seven. You do want to find these easy solves and intermediate solves in order to get to the spot where you would need the advanced strategy. You don't normally start a puzzle with an advanced strategy. And if we look here, we're going to 2B in block nine. You have this two and this two. The only place for the two is right there. And then with the six coming down, we can solve for a six right here. And then with this six, that can no longer be a six. The six are limited to these two spots in block seven. And then I'm going to give you a bonus tip right now. You notice there's only two cells I haven't filled out in block nine. It can only be a four and a five, right? Because the one nine are in these two cells. This is a naked pair, but it also acts as a pointing pair. So we're going to be able to do some solving here. Since a five has to be in one of these spots, five cannot be anywhere else along column so we can move the five from right there. That's going to be your eight, and that's going to be your five. And once you have a five right there, we can displace that Snyder mark and solve this cell for a five. Okay, let's look at the ones. You got a one here, and you got a one here now because we put that seven there. We can solve this cell for a one. And with these two ones and this one, we can solve for a one in block eight. And let's look at the sixes. Something interesting going on here. You know, say you have two sixes here. And then the sixes are limited to those two spots in block one and block seven. So this is called a mini X-wing. Basically, a six can be there and there, or it can be there and there. And what it tells us is in the sixes in block four have to be in column three because they can't be anywhere else along the column. And since you have a six right there, we can mark these two cells for sixes. And so this is a claiming pair of sixes. It claims the sixes in column three to be in block four. And so now sixes can't be in those spots anymore. I wanted to show you that claiming pair. It'll come in a little bit handy a little bit later. So you look in here, we're gonna five B. You got these two fives and this five. So that has to be a five. And then check out this six. Got across here, this six going up. 
We have now a pointing pair of sixes here in block five. Go with this six and the six in row three, we can solve for six in block two. And where can a two go now in block two? Well, because of this two, can't be here. Because of this two, can't be here, it has to be right here. So we're actually gonna fill in some candidates into our green cell. It can be a three or a four. Which one is it? Well, we gotta get to that advanced strategy to logically figure out which one it can be. We need a little bit more solving before that. So I'm gonna give you another bonus tip. You wanna find all the immediate strategies quickly so you can get to that spot that requires the advanced strategy. So another immediate strategy would be a hidden pair. You see this five nine in column five and then five nine in column six. That means the five nine are limited these two cells in block eight. Okay, and since the five nine have to be in block eight somewhere, and only two cells, no other cans can be there. So this is a hidden pair. And then it restricts what cells are remaining in block five here in column four. You need a three and a four. Well, I got a four right there. So there's your four and that's your three. You take these two threes and this three, you can solve for a three right there. You take this seven and this seven, and you can solve for a seven right here. And then we can do a little bit more solving here. You got this two. You can solve for a two right there. And then with these twos and this two, solve for two here, displacing that Snyder six, allowing us to solve for the six right here, allowing us to solve for an eight to finish block five. And just to keep track of a few things here, we notice with these two eights and this eight, put an eight right there. It's going to give us another three, four naked pair in block eight. Very interesting. And then you, you may notice too with this three, we have two places for a three, so we'll put Snyder threes in block seven, making a lot of restrictions. Only two places for a seven because of this seven right there. Okay, you see this nine cutting across. We have pointing pair of nines here in block two, so now nine can't be there. We already know it couldn't be there because of this claiming pair of nines. And so then the nines are limited to these two spots in block one. All right, and then with these two sevens, we have two places for a seven here. So I'm just filling out the marks, and you see we're getting to a spot where we're going to get stuck. All right, you got these two fours, winning pair of fours, that naked pair. It means the four has to be in this spot. And so we've done the fours, and then where can the ones be here in block four? With this one and this one, only two spots for one right there. Only two spots for one in block six. And the nines cut across here, only two spots for a nine in block six. And that is as far as you're going to get with Snyder notation. So the secret to find advanced strategy is solving the green cell. I'm about to give you that right now. First thing you want to do is get through here and do as much Snyder notation as you can. And the intermediate strategies reveal those. And then once you get to this spot and you can't find any more marks to make, you're going to either look at the BVCs, the buy value cells, and see if there's some strategies you can use there, or you can look at single candidate strategies. And since we're dealing with the three and a four that we want to solve here, let's go to the single candidate strategies. Where can the threes be in this puzzle? Be right there, be right here, be right there, be in these three spots. Okay, and we're going to color that blue. I like to color the single candidate strategies in blue. Now, you might notice some interesting patterns going on there. You notice that there's only two places for three in column two. All right, this is called a conjugate pair. And I'll mark this in purple. And you might notice there's only two places for three in column six. This is another conjugate pair. What that means is either this is a three. If it's not a three, that has to be a three. They rely on each other. They're conjugate pairs in two cells. We can mark this one in purple as well. And then the other part of that conjugate pair we can put in yellow. And so there's an interesting relationship here. You might notice that with a conjugate pair, either this is a three or it's not, right? So if that's a three, any cell that sees this cannot be a three. It's not a three, you force a three right here, which means this cell cannot be a three more, it had to be a four. And then this cell would be a three. So either this is a three and anything that sees it can't be a three. If it's not a three, this cell has to be a three. Anything that sees it cannot be a three. So what we found is a Sudoku skyscraper. Uh, what it does is that you have the bases are in the same row. The tips of the skyscraper are in 
two different blocks in different rows. So uh, the same bands, as you call it, like this is a set of three blocks of the band in different rows in different blocks of that band. That's a skyscraper. And what it allows you to do is that you can eliminate a three from right here and you can eliminate a three from right there. So there's some other neat stuff going on. You could actually do another skyscraper looking at these two cells and these two cells. That would be an upside down skyscraper and make elimination here and here. You could look at the skyscraper horizontally with these two cells and these two cells. And you'd make the elimination right there and or right here and here. Or you could do another strategy called a two string kite going with these cells. We have a conjugate pair coming out of the column or a conjugate pair coming out of the row. You have one conjugate horizontal, one vertical, same block. You know that one of those has to be a three. You can eliminate three from right there. These are all types of uh, turbot fish, which is a four cell X chain, single can strategy that leads to solves like this. Either way, you cannot have a three in this cell. So which way did you solve the green cell? Drop and share that in the comments with the other viewers. I need your comments in order to grow the best Sudoku community on YouTube. I value them so much, I respond to every single one. And I would love to hear from you. And no worries, if you didn't see the skyscraper, you can learn to spot them better with this tutorial. All right, let's remove the colors. And we can, you know, put our green cell back and know that this now has to be a four. And now we're going to do what I call following the Snyder. We're going to disambiguate the BVCs and displace the Snyder marks as we go. Let's see how far we can get. That's a three. That's a four. That's a three. That's going to be a five. That's going to be a four. With this five, disambiguate the five, nine right there. And now with this nine, we know we can displace that Snyder nine right there. Solve this four a nine which allows us to put a six right here and then we displace that snyder seven displacing that snyder three okay and the, this three and this three you can solve for three here displacing the snyder nine uh, disambiguate the four nine over here in block three with this six we can disambiguate the seven six up here and the only digit remaining in block one is an eight i don't see an eight here so i know this has to be the eight in block four, displacing the Snyder seven, displacing the Snyder one, displacing the Snyder nine. See how that works? Displace the nine there, solve this for a nine. That's why we put the Snyder marks. It makes it so much quicker when you do the solving at the end. And this one's going to allow us to disambiguate the nine here, the one there. And our last digit in block six is an eight. See if you can spot the advanced strategies in this next ACASH Dulani puzzle. Thank you so much for watching.